Yeah, but she's her. She's a legend in the face of everyone, but she's human behind all the metal. Just like Raga was. Oh! Oh, it looks so real. <laughs> oh shit. That's what he told them. He badmouthed Ragnar's legacy for this. In a way, for Bjorn to expect to win because of his yeah. father yeah. legacy and just because of he's the son of Ragnar, that's... Change their minds. What do you think I promise? I promised each of them what they wanted to say. Politics! Whatever that was. Whatever that was. And how do you plan to deliver? On your promise to all of them. Yeah. Who cares? Well, they do. You stupid old man. I always said it was my fate to become king of all Norway. And here I am. Don't you think it was fate? Do you not believe that the gods were behind? Oh, but I forgot. You don't believe in our gods anymore. You don't believe in anything. You think everything is just a dream. Well, kudos to him, like, he, he, yeah. he was a true politician. Yeah, but usually when our politicians don't follow through don't with their promises, people tend to not vote for them after four years, and in your case, they might kill you. So, Katia told me that she reminds you of someone. Oh, really? Traitor. Yes. My wife. You had the child with your wife. No. <laughs> How did you know that? He knows too much. I okay, he was many it. things about you. <laughs> what don't you know? I heard the dumbness. Am I not a prophet? You told me it was all fake. Do you mind if I take off these stairs? Oh, yes. It's too hot in here. Of course, my darling. I'm sure I won't mind. I'm sure he will. This is all planned! I fucking you. I fucking <laughs> She's in on it! Bitch! <laughs> I didn't like her in her previous life, I don't like her in this one either. <laughs> Once a bit, always a bit. He was aware about his child, so no, this is too convenient. Really? He's, he's hurting. He's, no, no, he's doing it because he knows it's gonna hurt him. I know, I know. But really? <laughs> I mean, even if he wasn't, you know. You have to stay. I do have to I have to watch it. It's good for you. I'm pretty sure he's the type of guy who would do this even if it wasn't gonna hurt either. Well, but still. Technically, they could come from the union. But it's our fault. Look at his face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. The only thing he do with his wife. I am gonna enjoy Oleg being defeated by Ivar. I have to thank you, Chatter Flat Nose. You've been very helpful to me. Hold on, still not sure why. You can arrange to send new settlers to Iceland. So you were right about him too! Fuck! <laughs> I want to be king of Iceland. And you can make it happen. Mm -hmm. Bjorn didn't trust him, so working with Harold would give him what he wants. Bjorn, you have to leave. What 
see me. The girl is going to kill you. How do you know? Don't ask questions. You must go now before it's too late. about his dream coming true. But this is too much. That, despite that? Well, I'm not surprised. No. And Flatnose just helps the one who offers the most. Controls everyone in Norway. <laughs> so, fuck. I'm going back to Katkat. I need to tell them what has happened here. Maybe Björn has come back. I need to see my son. I'm coming with you. No. You are wounded, and you are with child, with Björn's child. Bless you. She's going back like wounded. I'm pretty sure she didn't even tell anyone. I think that she's going back to die. How are you my life stranger? What is your name? Eric. Just Eric? Yes. I don't know why you did what you did. Is it because I am a son of Ragnar? No. I'm too young to remember Ragnar. I did what I did for Bjorn Ironside. I am in your debt. For what it is worth, I offer you my protection. This is very kind of you. But I noticed that you lost the election. So, I hope there is a future for both of us, Bjorn Ironside. I've heard of Eric the Red. Do you think that it might be him? I don't think Eric the Red is like one of the one of the most famous Viking in the story. Uh, really? I wouldn't know. This is so cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think that she went back to Katega to die. Well, don't let her die like this. Like, I, I, the music is amazing, though. Come to kill me! 
Huh? You wanted to kill me? No, of course I don't. Shut your mouth! This is what you did! I did! Oh no, don't don't fucking tell me that's what's gonna happen. He's gonna fucking s Oh He's gonna see her He's gonna see her on the yeah. He's gonna see her calling on the phone because she's wounded and he's gonna think that it's Cyber. from her last fight and so she was technically dying already I think she knew it like she she was fucking wounded no, like you she, said to yourself she, that she, she came here to die like, fucking pride she, fucking she wanted to die where she she used to belong in her home in Katagat it's sad that Bjorn wasn't there though they gave her like one one hell of a last fight. They gave her a moment, like they they gave her the the time that that moment when everyone just chanted her name and they were saying that she was like she got so much respect from everyone because like she was wounded, she was limping, and she managed to defeat that guy. You said to yourself that it felt like a a buzz battle. Well, no wonder because she died right after, you know. But it still makes me mad because like how. Like, she accepts it. Like, of course, she's known that she was going to die like this for years. But the, it's just so... It makes me so mad that she, like like you said, she doesn't die in battle. She doesn't die anywhere. Which, I mean, I, I respect the show for doing stuff like this. Because they did the same with, um, 
What's his name? I forgot. Fuck, the bishop. Edmund? Edmund. They did the same with him. Like, he, he dies in a stupid moment where he wasn't looking, you know? So this... This makes sense. It's, and, I mean, the song was amazing. And the song said her name. Like, this was a huge red flag. Like, you see her stumbling around in the rain. <sighs> I don't know for you, but I thought that I heard her name. And did, she didn't really say... I'm pretty sure she said like, like her name that, yeah. in the song. So it was... Like a requiem for her? Kinda. Like, it, like at the beginning of the song, like as soon as I heard her name, and as soon as I saw that she was showing up, like, half dead, like, I knew it in my core. Like, I knew it. I knew she was gonna die. It's just... And, I mean, the only son around who could do it was Witzig, of course, but to have him do it because he's hallucinating Ivar makes, like, makes... It makes sense, you know? It makes so much sense, but at the same time, it's, like comes out of nowhere it's not even a halfway point of the season but when you think about it they technically show us that this would have happened we knew that she was going to be killed by one of Ragnar's sons yeah we knew we saw it's like having a hallucination of Hivar uh, crawling to him of a snake crawling to him like like I'm saying I'm not surprised and him seeing Lagerta half dead on the ground I mean, they've been hyping this up for ever since the beginning of this season. So I'm not surprised. Like, what makes me mad is not that they they cheated us like this. You know, I'm not mad at the show because technically they did they did everything right. You know, they, they told us how it was going to happen and we just chose to ignore it. Or we, you know, we made assumptions and then they surprised us when it came to the moment. It's kind of, it's Athelstan's death all over again, you know? Well, where you see it coming, yeah. like the clues are there, but yes and no, yes and no. Well, Adelstan, with Adelstan, we knew that Floki didn't love him and had something against him, so we expected him to kill him at some point, but it was just he just did it in a rush way, so that we got shocked. Well, he did it but in a rush way, way but no, not really because. I, he, we had time to see Athelstan go back to his religion, and then Floki saw him toss away his arm ring, which set everything up. And well, then he started walking from all over, the, you know, all, all from the river and from the lake. We saw him walking, and they brought in the, the, the actual band who plays the, the most of the songs <laughs> in the show. I know. And, uh, and uh, they played the song, and we saw them. So, I mean, everything was hyped yeah, for this moment, kind of like this. Yeah. We knew that it was just a moment. Uh, a mm -hmm. amount of uh, a amount of time for Floki to kill Athelstan. I mean, it wasn't like for Ragnar. If Ragnar, we knew like two or three episodes of, like before it happened that it was going to happen. We had a feeling before, but we knew he was going to die a few episodes before we saw him die. We got to prepare ourselves, and everything was set up so that his death would happen. Like as and contrary to contrary to. Um, Athelstan and Lagertha, it kind of showed up and we were surprised by it, but all the clues were there. It's just that they were really well hidden I think and so that random that we didn't make the connection. But everything makes sense. Like, I'm not mad about that. I'm just, I mean, we lose a character. That... Well, it's been six seasons. She has a long run. She was at the I'm, end of her life. Like I don't look like it, guys, but I'm I'm really sad that she's dead. Because of course you don't I, look sad. I, I'm, I'm not going to cry the next one, which is good. They're going to do a... Or funeral. funeral. But I think that was more shocking about it is like with Athelstan and with Rhino, we expected of Floki and for Ale, uh, Ale to kill them. But with Lagerta and with Ela, yeah, Ela. yeah, we expected of them to kill Athelstan and Rhino, but with Lagerta and Ditzer, Visuk wasn't in a state of mind to kill Lagerta. He didn't and he felt see, bad about he it. He didn't see Lagertha. He felt bad, which is I why I'm actually more sad about it. Because was more expecting him or one of the son of Vraina to kill her in a battlefield because they wanted to kill Lagertha and avenge their mother, which they didn't. They didn't want to do anymore. Basically. No, I mean the reason why she dies makes no sense for her. She expected it because she was told she was going to die. But I think this is why it's such a tragedy. It's because she dies. Like in her, from her point of view, it's not so much a tragedy because I think she expected to die soon, and the fact that she got to die a warrior, respected by a lot of people, is actually good. 
and she gets, I mean, I was saying earlier after the battle that even though people were cheering for her and stuff, she, she looked tired, like she felt tired. And people were saying that for, for their sake, like she, they hoped that she was going to live for a long life and she was, you know, still going to be able to fight with them. And I was like, that's not what she wants. So for her to die here is actually a good ending for her because I think she wanted to go. She was done with the life. And, and she was like the shield and people hacked pieces of her away and she lost so much and at the end like there was only a little piece of her left and that piece was still used to kill and stuff like she was never given the rest that she wanted so I think that death like Ragnar from death is kind of um, a mercy a mercy for her but what makes this even sadder is that for Vitsa, it's going to be terrible because now he's, he knows and he's going to live with the, this guilt because at this point, no one in Kattegat hates Lagertha and Bjorn is coming back and Vitsa is already feeling bad about everything that's going on. If, it's, if it gets known that he's the one who killed Lagertha, he's going to feel like shit and they're going to retaliate. Yeah, I think he's they might try to kill him. Well, maybe not kill him, but Bjorn is going to do something. Like, I I don't know. I don't know how he's going to take it. But, like, because death death is different for them than it is for anyone else. But it looks like someone, I mean, killed her without her knowing. You know, it looks like she got killed in a moment of weakness, which she was. And it, it doesn't look like a fair fight or, you know, a fair death. So a lot of people will see that as not death in battle. It's murder. It is murder, so I don't know how they will react to it, and I don't think they will see like Vitzik's addiction as a good enough reason to be like, well, I mean, he was sick, so. <sighs> In any it's case, gonna get, it's gonna get worse, guys. It's gonna get so much worse. Yeah, and in any case, I'm sad because like. We have very few. I mean, we have no characters and Bjorn. We have Bjorn left from season one. We have Rolo, but we don't see much. I don't know, people that are still actively in the show. Because Floki is still there too, it's just well, that he's not there, we there. Don't, we didn't see him since uh, since the beginning of season, uh, season six, so... No. I know, but I think he's still alive. In any case, right now he's not there, so... Lagertha was like... And I mean, Bjorn wasn't Bjorn Bjorn in first yeah. season, so... Lagertha was, was the OG. Yes. So to have her die is really sad. And yes, next episode we're gonna cry like that. Fuck! I did not expect to cry today. I did not expect this to happen today. I would have expected it to happen last episode when it was like mid season. But no, they like to surprise us like this. But at the same time, it doesn't feel cheap like Game of Thrones. You know, it doesn't feel like oh we're gonna some. You know, we're gonna. It be doesn't feel some. like you're my queen. No, no, but I feel like that. they're not trying to surprise us for the sake of surprising us. Like I said, they did, like, however sad or, or mad we are about what happened, they, all the clues were there. They planted the seeds seasons ago, and we knew of them. We just didn't, didn't expect them to mold, do it, mold like that, you know? All the clues were there, and this episode had many red flags. Like, watching it again, we would probably see everything, like, with a new... Uh, a new perspective and we'd be like, well, yes, of course, she was dead before it even, it, it even started, just not in the way we thought. But she'll get to be with Ragnar, so I'm not gonna go further with that, down that road because I'm gonna cry even more and I don't want to. Like, I'm okay. not crying right now, but I can feel it in my throat. It's, cu it's Let, close. Let's speak about the high ups <sighs> of the episode. The battle with the shield maiden against the bandits. That was so well planned. I like the fact that they created like some some sort of maze to trap them and just uh, hide behind the walls and just guts them to them. Good strategies. It reminded me of it's not the same, but it reminded me of the battle in Paris, where you know they had a lot of traps and they had a lot of uh, me mechanisms placed and stuff like to the, prevent like when they were on the bridge the bridge and you know the, the the oil and stuff and Ivar also used stuff like that but every time they well, they bring it, back... it reminds me of the battle in York where they were hiding uh, on the ground and they were just jumping well and that's killing that's them. a bit of that but I mean it's it's parts of Paris York uh Kattegat earlier it's it's a lot of past battles and you see that the knowledge is not lost you know all the strategies and I mean it's like Ritha who came up with all of this so 
we see the the experience we see all the battles that she's been through and she used everything in this battle and it worked like everyone most people survived in this battle and uh yeah no more cat not more there more more people could have died if it wasn't for her plan so I'm, I'm really glad I'm about gonna that. say though I was a little bit disappointed for the kids who die on on the hills <laughs> like, sad you mean no 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 but I was sad for the event but strate stra strategically sorry well it makes sense to put the archers they should have been in other places because like I said the bandits Remember that they used to put people there to shoot them with arrows. Yeah, but I mean, you only have so many archers. You no, put people where you can, and placing archers here is a good plan. It's just that they came more prepared because they, even though he, he did that speech about, you know, f fearing women and how it was ridiculous and stuff, I'm like, he still came, you know, not underestimating, uh, underestimating them as much as he did the last time. True. So... They had to have some sort of win before they got massacred in the maze, you know? <laughs> in any case. And uh, speaking of, of, of planning and stuff, we've got Harold, who really played it like a G in this episode. It will do good in our I time. Mean, but what he did, though, is risky because, like you yeah. said, you know, if you start promising stuff and then you don't follow through on that promise, I mean, today people would just, you know curse and be like, oh, politicians, p politicians will be politicians, you know, they will lie to get the seat and then once they are there, they're not doing anything, but yeah. this is Vikings, uh, they're not just going to curse and follow through, like, they might rebel if you don't follow through. Yeah, you promise. might lose your head. And then, But I, I like the twist that, for, for most of them, what he said was that people g genuinely want to give the seat to Ragnar's sons because Ragnar and his family created such a legacy it's like they were born to be leaders and the common folk you know the people who stand no chance against that legacy kinda you know they respect the guy but when they start asking themselves like is it is the guy worth everything that people are saying about him or is it just because his dad used to be Ragnar that we follow him because in this case I mean, they deserve their chance. Like, they deserve their spot. And Harold was intelligent in, you know, going to them and being like, I want to represent the people. Not, you know, I don't want to follow another son of Ragnar who was put there not because of what he did, but just because of his name. You know? It's but, a bit hypocritical, though, because when he turns around and goes to Olaf, he's saying, I was always fated to be king of all Norway. So I'm like, well, you just said that you didn't want Bjorn to be... King of Norway because he's always fated. He's he always says he's fated to be king and stuff. And and sons of Ragnar's always have all the fame and stuff because they are fated for great things. And then he turns yeah. around and he's like, "I'm fated to be king of Norway." So I'm like, he's playing a double game, and yeah. he presents himself as the king of the people. But he said that only to win. So good plan. But if you don't follow through, I'm expecting a rebellion. So, but in a way, I can understand that. It's true that you shouldn't rely on your father's legacy to get what she wants. Which is why I like that the stranger said that he didn't save him because he's a son of Ragnar. He saved him because he's Bjorn. Yeah. I mean, Bjorn also has so, a legacy. So that's, so that's really good. And I'm really wondering if it might be maybe Eric the Red. Maybe. Because, um, like I said, I, I used to know a few names in the Viking history, like Ragnar, Ivar, and Eric the Red. <laughs> like, Eric the Red was maybe my first name that I saw when I saw But do you Vikings. remember the era? I don't remember the era, but I know that it was, like, ferocious. I mean, he doesn't <laughs> look that ferocious or that powerful, but... No, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I just heard Eric, and for me it's like, oh, maybe, maybe. You could be. Why the um, red? Because of the blood. Um, <laughs> but because, because of the blood, because he got red, red hair, but maybe because of the blood. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. If it is, like, if it's if it, it was proven, just tell us in the comments. That'd be cool. In any case, um, and yes, I was like, when the election happened and stuff, I knew that there was some shenanigans going on. Uh, I did not expect Flatnose to actually help Harold winning here, but, but because, I mean, he almost said to be to be careful and stuff. So I was like, well, maybe, but I forgot at that, in that moment, I forgot that he also was sending weird looks to Bjorn because he doesn't 
Bjorn doesn't trust Flat Nose. No, he doesn't. Well, and now he does because he well, technically helped him sa uh, save them. It's better than, you know, just leaving, leaving him to die. Like, he did try to protect him. At the same time, I feel like he's playing a double game as well all the time. You know, he just goes to the guy who can give him what he wants. And when Harold basically said that, you know, he wasn't gonna give him what he wanted, and he was, or at least he didn't promise anything, and then he turned around to go after Bjorn, Flat Nose, which I kind of, I respect, you know, he didn't let Bjorn die, but at the same time, I'm like, you still helped Harold. So, I mean, I can't say I trust you. Yeah. I like that he protected Bjorn and he didn't let him die. But why did he protect him? Is it because he didn't want him to die, or is it because when Harold basically didn't say he was gonna, you know, name him king of, of Iceland, he was like, shit, I'm not getting what I want, so let's go back to the guy who could potentially beat Harold and, yeah. you know, help me become king of, of Iceland. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't like him, and I don't trust him, so... Well, I don't think that Flat Nose is... Um got his reputation for being a good strategist and a good thinker. No. So he might do a lot of mistakes with his plans. You know? Uh, for now at least he's on Bjorn's side and um Bjorn is gonna fight Harold because Harold is set on I I don't know if it was the plan from the beginning, you know, to go after Bjorn. Well but Harold did seem a little bit pissed that Bjorn wasn't at the at the feast. So but maybe, I mean, maybe he did, not, he did turn, not. like, he did decide to go after him fast, like, him, Bjorn not being there could have been because he just, well, he obviously didn't support this because he knew that, like, it, the plan was for him to become king. And the thing is, I think that Bjorn would never have gone for this strategy, for this voting thing, if he thought that he had a chance to lose. So having Harold win obviously rubbed him the wrong way, and there's the fact that I think he knew Harold played his, his this yeah. game, you know, behind his back. Like I said, Bjorn knowing that Harold had a had a had a say in what was going to happen during the vote made him look pissed. But even if he didn't know it, might be he kind of looked more like a soul loser to me, you know? And I mean, there was, for a moment, there was one, like, one of the like guys that he, went to kill him, though, was one of the guys he branded and, and set aside. So I got confused a bit. I was like, is it Harold who's trying to kill him? Or is it just, like, people who showed up to kill Bjorn, you know, as it's all happening? I was a bit confused. Like, is he working for Harold or, or not? Like, he showed up, like, well, randomly, so I was... I don't think that he's working for Airwall because when it all left, it got captured by Olaf. And during that time, Bjorn sent away those guys. And those guys were mostly with Lagerta. So I don't think. No, but he's I mean, for the thing is, like, people, like, Flat Nose, when Harold left, he mentioned, you know, going after advice and stuff, and he went to, to seek Bjorn. And then Flat, Flat Nose left and said to Bjorn that, that Harold was coming to kill him. And then people showed up, and then Bjorn started fighting. The thing is, if Harold was actually going to kill Bjorn, then Flatno saved his life. If Harold was not going to kill Bjorn, but Flat, but just you know getting him because he didn't know what he was doing and stuff, and Flatno, not Flat, if Harold was not going to kill Bjorn, and it just happened to be a, a misunderstanding, and Flatno came and said, "You, uh, you need to leave. Uh, Harold is going to kill you." Then Bjorn fighting back and leaving like this looks like he's not supporting the vote and he's against Harold, so there's gonna be a fight. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think that Harold's gonna plan to murder Bjorn like that. But that's that. that's the thing. Like he was saying so... that you know, I know he played it all and stuff, and I, I can understand not liking that Bjorn doesn't, you know, wanna follow him. But then to flat out just turn around and decide to kill him after he was voted king of Norway, I'm like, Bjorn is still important. Like, there's still people who support him. So killing him really doesn't place you in a good spot. So which, and the fact that the guy showed up, the, the guy who tried to kill Bjorn was saying that he was the one branded. That's why I was like, well, he's not with Harold then. So the people trying to kill him are not with Harold, right? I was confused by this. So that's why I'm, I'm still, you know, not sure if Harold really tried to kill Bjorn in, the, in that moment. But the fact of the matter is that now they're going to be at each other's throats again and they're going to be fighting each other. Once again. And Bjorn is going to be against all Norway. <laughs> <laughs> well, with, with uh, Ragnar Sands, it's all or nothing, you know? It's all, all or nothing. nothing. Uh, speaking of Ragnar Sands, let's go back with Ivor. 
Oh, he's not enjoying him. this at all. Poor him. I mean, there's not much I want to say about Ivar's situation because I was more focused on everything else this episode. But... Oh, he knew about everything. Well, he knew about his son, so he knew about that. He probably knew that he was married. To know the the looks of his wife, like that's still a stretch. Because but that's not uh, Fredis. She, no, she, no, he killed her, so yes. that's not her. That's for sure. I know that, but still. I think it's still a stretch that he found a princess that looks exactly like her. Like, this could be fate, but he still uses it as a weapon against Ivar. You, I mean, we saw it. Like, he, as soon as he learned that she was... Like, she learned that she looked like his ex... Uh, like his wife, so she, she basically went back to her husband and she said, Oh my God, we've got an opportunity. And he saw that as an opportunity. He's like, let's taunt him. Because I think he knows that he's the one who set his brother free, so he's trying to... Uh, Back hurt. him against a wall and hurt him yeah. a little bit more. So he's getting dangerous. And the thing is, he doesn't like right now. Ivar is doing his thing, but he's still very mellow compared to what we've seen of him before. So pushing him in that direction is not a good idea. And I'm expecting some retaliation. Yeah. But right now, he needs to be careful because he is alone, <laughs> surrounded by a lot of enemies. He is. And there's still the... Oh, I mean, now Uba knows he's in... in he's there. You know, he knows the, he's in... K K Rush. What's the name of the city? Kiev. Kiev. Anyway, he's in there. I don't remember. And, uh, but the thing is, he's never... I, I don't think they're going to partner up, you know? But there's still the fact that they know he's there. So he could use that as an opportunity if they attack. Uh, he could still sneak his way out somehow... We will see. But right now he's at a disadvantage, so he needs to control his emotions, even though it's hard because we saw it on his face, he's really not taking it well. He needs to control his emotions and stay focused. Because it's a dangerous game, and the guy he's playing against is crazier than he is. It's the first time we've actually seen a guy being crazier than Ivar. That's dangerous. And that's a, a huge lap... Uh, a huge... That's really difficult to achieve, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, that's a huge feat. Yeah, that's feet. what, yeah, that's what I, that's what I, anyway. that's what I wanted to say. In any case, so that was uh, Lagertha's death, I guess. The episode where she died, I did. I mean, I'm surprised it happened. I did not expect this to happen tonight at all. We still have stuff to record. I'm like, ah, I don't think I can. Like, I'm yeah. too... My yeah, makeup is all smudged. So we might start. The next episode is going to be sadder, you know? They're going to deal with the funerals and stuff. I don't want this to be real, guys. Okay, anyway. Thank you so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next one right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out right now. The link is in the description. Yeah, or if you don't, you can wait for the next one to be up on YouTube, guys, which will be next week. So we're going to see you then. Bye.